On September 29, 2022, the James Webb Space Telescope took pictures that completely shattered astronomers' theories about the universe. The thing is, these distant and ancient galaxies turned out to be way too complex for their incredibly young age of just a few hundred million years. In other words, scientists were expecting to see space infants, but ran across real space old-timers. The modern standard cosmological model predicts that such intricate celestial bodies should gradually form over billions of years, just like everything else in our universe. But how did these galaxies manage to get so far ahead of time? Scientists still can't provide a clear-cut answer. However, for American philosopher William Craig and some other experts, Webb's snapshots became evidence of God's existence. Supporters of this theory believe that the galaxies don't conform to the laws of evolution because they weren't evolving at all. Supposedly, they were created that way by the Almighty Lord. Of course, at first, this sounds absurd. Can we really find any scientific proof of God's existence? Don't be quick to say no, as the unexpected answers I've found might leave you speechless. And finally, can we actually prove the existence of God? we and everything else like planets and galaxies are made of accounts for just 5% of the total mass of the universe. Everything else is dark matter and dark energy. But here's the twist. For now, they are a purely theoretical concept. Scientists of the 20th century had to literally invent them. Otherwise, Einstein's general theory of relativity would have been dead wrong. In Italy, in the Gran Sasso underground laboratory, experts have been trying for years to track down hypothetical dark matter particles. They're watching over a gigantic tank filled with three and a half tons of liquid xenon, a chemical element typically used in specialized lamps and car headlights. Scientists suspect it might help them catch exotic dark matter particles, one of which, at some point, is theoretically supposed to interact with the liquid and activate detectors. After decades of studying dark matter, experts haven't found any evidence that it's actually composed of particles. And still, they persistently continue their search because, don't forget, Einstein's grand theory is on the line here. On top of that, it doesn't explain another, even more global phenomenon. In 1998, the Hubble Space Telescope spotted something mind-blowing. Galaxies weren't just moving away from each other, they were doing it with acceleration. This took the scientific community by surprise, and we still don't know what is causing this speed boost. Astronomers call this mysterious force dark energy. But unfortunately, attempts to explain this phenomenon only raise more questions. A well-known cosmological idea, known as the Kalam argument, claims that everything that exists has a cause. We know that everything in the universe came from a previous state. But if so, what brought into existence our universe itself? In other words, what caused the Big Bang? While scientists keep debating, the answer is obvious for many people. It must have been God. To be more precise, one very specific act of God. In the mythology of Australia's indigenous people, there's a legend that says God created the world using three sacred songs. They believe that this melody of these songs resonated so deeply within the earth that it gave rise to mountains and rivers. Ancient Australians even tried to depict this, and their symbols look uncannily similar to how modern scientists mark earthquakes on maps. At the same time, ancient Hindus insisted on chanting the primordial mantra, the sacred sound of Om. Meanwhile, in the Bible, 
the main book for every Christian, it stated that in the beginning was the Word. Doesn't it seem like all these legends are telling the same story in different ways? It's as if everything in our universe was created with the help of divine sounds, or in scientific terms, vibrations that entered into resonance. The most astonishing part is that modern scientists completely agree with this idea. Today, scholars believe that everything in the universe has its own prime resonance frequency. Imagine that you push a child's swing at just the right time, it'll swing higher and higher. But if you push too early or too late, it won't reach the same amplitude. This correct rhythm is a simplified example of the resonance frequency of a swing. And the same principle applies to any other physical object. Light is the wave of the visible spectrum. Sound is wave-like vibrations of particles in a medium. And a magnetic field is formed through electromagnetic waves. Nowadays, you can find experiments in many museums where sounds of a certain frequency influence sand in a way that creates mesmerizing patterns. Who knows, maybe ancient people revered sound waves so much because they once accidentally saw this phenomenon. Yet, not only mythologies suggest that our ancestors had deep knowledge of residents, but also some architectural landmarks. In 2003, pilot Johann Heine stumbled upon a gigantic stone structure. It was later named Adam's Calendar. Alternative analyses by researcher Michael Tellinger revealed that Adam's Calendar could be as old is 300,000 years. It turns out that the structure stands on a so-called natural magnetron. Usually, this term is used to describe a powerful artificially created generator of electromagnetic waves. However, in some corners of the Earth, a similar process occurs naturally. These are the so-called cymatic patterns, stone circles that appear on the planet's surface in places with the most active vibrations. And yes, they really resemble the diagrams of modern magnetrons. In similar places, ancient people built not only Adam's calendar, but also lots of other monumental complexes all over the world. Today, experts assume that these structures were used as religious centers. Did our ancestors literally connect with God through resonance because it's his primary language? Or perhaps they believed that resonance is God? This is the so-called Sacred Heart, a special symbol of the Catholic Church. It's believed to have become an object of worship in the 17th century after a nun named Margaret Mary Alacoque shared her revelation. During prayer, the woman supposedly saw Jesus himself, who showed her his own heart. But the closer Margaret got to it, the more evident it became that there was no end in Jesus' heart. It was as boundless as Christ's love for humanity. What's most interesting is that modern mathematicians are well familiar with an object having the same characteristics. In the 1970s, a French-American mathematician named Benoit Mandelbrot noted that the geometry we know is undoubtedly a beautiful science, but it has nothing to do with what we see in the environment. Mountains are not perfect cones, lightning doesn't travel in a straight line, and clouds are far from being perfect spheres. It turns out that nature works according to its own laws, very different from our geometry. At the core of these laws is self-similarity. That's right, in his work, Mandelbrot mentioned fractals, special structures made up of self-similar elements. Based on white noise data, Mandelbrot was able to derive an infinite equation and thus obtained one of the most iconic images in science, the set that later received his name. But if we visualize it, we'll see a very curious shape resembling the Sacred Heart of Jesus. 
The black dots represent numbers that belong to the Mandelbrot set, while the colored areas correspond to results that did not make it into the set. And this pattern is infinitely expandable. The silhouette keeps repeating itself no matter how deeply we dive into the image. So how did this unbelievable organization and beauty come about? American astrophysicist Jason Lyle tried to answer that question. The researcher grew up in a Christian family, and since his family revered the Bible, it was always challenging for him to reconcile these beliefs with his scientific pursuits. However, Lyle later noticed if religious sources like the Bible are not taken literally, but in the context of science, it turns out that sacred scriptures are quite compatible with modern theories. In 2021, Jason Lyle released a book titled Fractals, The Secret Code of Creation. In this work, the scientist claims that fractals are evidence that our world was created by a perfect divine entity. Furthermore, he says that if we perceive God not as some almighty old man, but as a collection of perfect mathematical formulas, the Lord can indeed constantly be with humans, as stated in the Bible. After all, fractals surround us all the time. For example, this is a cluster of galaxies in the Laniakea, and these are the neural connections in our brain. The scales are radically different, but the images are pretty similar, aren't they? But if God is always nearby, can we somehow get in touch with him? No matter how crazy it may sound, the US government took the matter of observing God quite seriously. In 2003, the CIA declassified a shocking document titled Analysis and Assessment of Gateway Process. It's quite a wordy report covering everything from quantum mechanics to certain biomedical models, theoretical physics, hypnosis, meditation, and even occultism. What's most interesting is that it discusses a highly intriguing method of contacting divine entities by Robert Monroe. In 1971, he founded an institute specializing in studying out-of-body experiences, altered states of consciousness, and the limits of human capabilities. The researchers at this organization even developed a unique algorithm. They called it the gateway process. It supposedly allowed people to extend their consciousness beyond the physical world and communicate with God. I know, it sounds absolutely wild. Everything changed in 1978, when the US military began searching for innovative methods of observation. The Monroe Institute's activities were suddenly classified, and several dozen American officers were directed to explore the gateway process. The military liked the out-of-body method of communicating with God so much that many of them expressed a desire to undergo the program again. But what exactly were they studying? The declassified CIA document provides an algorithm to change the amplitude and frequency of the waves transmitted between the left and right hemispheres of the brain. Adjusting this resonance takes human consciousness beyond the limits of the physical realm because the left and right hemispheres have very different functions. If we completely synchronize them, our consciousness will no longer be constrained by physical boundaries. And American military personnel really confirmed that they got out of body experience, during which the material world no longer stopped them from unlocking their inner selves. In 2003, the CIA declassified the entire gateway process document, but there was a catch. They concealed one page of it. While cleaning up the documents at the Monroe Institute, they found a complete copy, along with that lost page, and it stated that God does exist. However, in the text, he is referred to as the Absolute, a conscious energy without boundaries. It can penetrate anywhere and be anywhere all of the time 
just like the biblical Lord. Does this mean that all the time the CIA was hiding our own divine essence from us? Whether you believe in God or not, there's nothing stopping you from trying the gateway process for yourself. To begin, you'll need a dark, quiet, and cozy place where no one will disturb you. When you find it, lie down, close your eyes, put on your headphones, and enjoy. For the next hour, you'll be listening to something like this. 